For more on inflation and what it could mean for the broader markets, rates in the Fed, let's bring in Greg Fleming, president and CEO of Rockefeller Capital Management, former president uh, of Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, uh, major player at Merrill Lynch and everything that happened in the, in the financial crisis. Uh, you're almost uh, you're kind of a legend, almost, Greg. Is that, is that overstating things? If it's coming from you, it's not. I'll take it. Yeah. Um, what a week and, and what, what a period we're in right now with all the cross currents. I think you've got something that's pretty interesting, though, that explains a lot. Because we can't understand how the economy is, is still look, appears to be so strong after 500 basis point increase in, uh, in interest rates. You think maybe 6 to 7 percent government spending as a percentage of, of GDP accounts for some of that. You know, it, what's remarkable to me, Joe, is, uh, is that it doesn't get even more attention than, than it, it is. I mean, th when you look at the uh, magnitude of that relative to anything that's ever happened before, we're virtually at full employment, uh, and the service sectors still have a shortage of workers, which is part of the reason why I think inflation is a little stubborn from here. Uh, and then uh, you're running deficits on top of that at 6 to 7 percent of GDP, which has never been seen before in a time as positive of, as this, really all the way back to post-World War II. That's a huge stimulus in the economy. Uh, and that's clearly a part of why it's hanging in there. Uh, and, and it's also a problem when you start looking at the magnitude of the debt that we're putting on as a society. It's something that needs to be addressed by both parties. But uh, that's, that's a major part, in my eyes, of why we are where we are, where the economy continues to have the strength that it does. It, and th it, there, there are other positives. We could talk about AI and productivity, but let, let's stay on fiscal for a second. Yeah, because um, near term, maybe it feels pretty good, but we had Phil Swagel on, who's uh, the, the, mentioned on the front page of the, uh, the journal today, but talking about... Was it 2035, I think? I think it, was, it might have been 2040. But debt to GDP will still be 120% then. This, this, is, this only happened one other time where we were this high, and that was after World, World War II. II. Yeah. And it's not going away. It's going to be for the next 10 years. It'll probably get, get even bigger. Now, sooner or later, just if interest rates, especially if they go up, just interest payments... You've got nothing else you can spend any money on, and that it, it would seem to crowd out any growth in GDP, unless the productivity you're talking about is really special from AI. Even if it's special, though, 120 percent you might sign up for now. When you look at some of the potential trends, 150. Lines, it goes, yeah, it goes beyond that, and if rates pop. What would that do to, to, our, to growth in, in the economy? Well, let's just come back to, uh, before I answer that, one, one right. thing that I, I think might make it more dramatic for the American people, the fact that interest payments on the debt in 2025 will exceed dis, uh, defense spending. That, that should get a reaction. I mean, that's just a, a, a spectacular statistic. Uh, eventually, what happens in a society is that, uh, first of all, from an uh, economic standpoint, you're either going to have to raise taxes or cut spending, or, or both when it gets to that level. And that's obviously contractionary from an economic standpoint. And then if the, uh, if the rate of growth starts to slow, it compounds itself. And there are clearly examples throughout history. There are countries that are still struggling today, having gotten into this. I mean, look at the story of Argentina over a full century. So the United States is a, obviously a very different economy. It, the private sector here is vibrant. Uh, we continue to innovate. You know, the positives, AI and, and uh, the, the uh, technological innovation We've here. got the reserve currency of the world. We so still we, do, although you put that at risk the more you do this. There's just no question. Without there. that, we're screwed, definitely. And, and what's happened in recent years is clearly people are, uh, around the world, they're looking for alternatives for the first time, right? Now, the reason we still have the world's reserve currency in part is that there are no viable alternatives yet. But if something emerges, if we're at 150 or 200 percent debt to GDP and there are more viable alternatives, then, then yeah, that MMT could be Because doesn't work uh, unless you've got the reserve currency. I don't know if it ever works, but there, there are people that still... Still saying that 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 this is fine because we got the reserve currency we can spend as we can print money, so we can do whatever we well, want. Look at the whole supply and demand part of it now with the Fed. I mean, the, the amount of debt that we have to put out there, and China's pulled back as a buyer, Japan has pulled back as a buyer. There's a possibility here, just on a supply and demand basis, you're going to get a more upwardly sloping yield curve, 
just uh, because of the, the need to get this much paper out on a regular basis. So this is a big topic. So, uh, I mean, it puts a lot of pressure on the Fed to want to cut rates, too. It does. But it, it really they does. They can't have the inflation problem roaring back. Well, and, I, and I, you know, I, I think they jumped the gun in December. Uh, you know, jumped they, the gun. In terms of moving so quickly from raising rates to signaling that they might go to a very different uh, posture and there may be uh, rate cuts as, as early as March. I mean, the language in, in December was pretty dovish. And I think they did that because they, uh, they clearly blew it the first time coming out of the pandemic where they waited too long to raise and then had to really chase it 75 basis points at a time, which helps uh, create the situation for the banking crisis last March. So they wanted to make sure that they were ahead of the curve this time, but they jumped the gun. You know, it, 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 they have a lot of things they're considering, but the data didn't. What, I, I feel like they are data dependent. And the criticism that Mohammed el Arian will suggest is that they're too data dependent. They believe the data too much and they shouldn't do. I mean, it, 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 it's a much more difficult task than we're, we're making. No, it it's definitely a difficult task, but um, uh, they, they set on a path and they should finish that. And I think they were quick to, it, they surprised everybody in December. And now they've tried to talk it back. The market's and, been trying to push them there, too. It has. And I agree with Mohammed that uh, data uh, month over month is hard to internalize short term movements in data and, and make decisions that are as fundamental as this, mm -hmm. which is why I think they're going to let it go. I think this. I they, think they will, too. They're clearly not going to do March, and they, it may be the middle of the year before they make the first cut or even, you know. Well, that's a grim later. picture you point, and you do hold out the. The hope that maybe AI and, and technology could, in, in, you know, could increase productivity and maybe we catch up with some of this stuff. But do you think AI can be a net positive for employment? It, it, what if it's not? We're going to be a UBI. We're going to be a universal basic income country someday. It may increase productivity, but no one's going to have a, have a do, job. Do you know, Joe, there's never been, and, and uh, if you think about this, I think you'll agree, there's never been a major technological that breakthrough hasn't been that good. hasn't been uh, employment positive. positive. Is and this if, the first one? No, I don't think so. I, I think, and if you look back even at the internet, you, you know, you have search optimization engineers now and specialists. In the mid-90s, in the late 90s, who would have thought of a search optimization engineer? <laughs> yeah. Right? So you have a whole set of jobs that are created out of the emerging technology. I think AI will certainly enhance productivity and probably create new jobs and in industries that the three of us couldn't conceive. Nobody can conceive of today. So that's